and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ashay and from today we are going to start our new series which is dedicated to Neo4j graph databases where we will start with what is graph database, why it is used and why it is popular nowadays. And then we will jump into the technicality stuff and talk about the Neo4j graph database which is one of the most popular graph database in the world today. So without wasting any time, let's jump into it. Okay, so the first question that will come into your mind is what really is a graph, right? You know all about SQL and how the data is stored in SQL as a rows and columns and it is presented as a table. But in graph databases, it is not like that case. In graph databases, the data is represented as a type of nodes and relationships. So what do you mean by that and how that data is represented as a nodes and relationship that we are going to see with some examples. Okay, so let's take a real world scenario. Let's take an example of a Twitter data set. So Twitter has millions of users and they have graph databases as their backbone to store all the information related to their user database. So let's take an example here. So in the first example, as you can see here, we got the three nodes. So this round here will represent three nodes and they have a label called as users. So user will identify the role in the database. So as you can see, we got the three users, Billy, Harry, as well as the Ruth, and they got all the label as user. But to add more context into our graph, we have brought another parameter, which is like relationship and all have the same relationship, which is follows. So as you can see, by seeing in this simple graph, it is given that Billy will follow Harry and they have a relationship between them as well as a direction. And as well as Harry has reciprocated and follows Billy. So that's why we got two relationships with opposite directions. And same here for Harry and Ruth. They follow each other and have two relationships between them. But sadly, Billy doesn't follow Ruth, so that's why it only shows one relationship. But this is just a simple example. Let's take a next step ahead and add messages of Ruth in our graph. So in this second graph, as you can see, we incorporated message node in our graph. So it shows three messages which are published by Ruth and incorporated two relationships, which is current and previous which represents the current message which is posted by Ruth as well as the previous messages he has posted. But this is not the complete graph of Twitter. You know that Twitter has millions of users and they will have like millions of nodes, not even billions of nodes in the graph. So all the data that you provide during the account creation of Twitter, all those attributes will be created as a nodes in the graph. It is not just like a user or the messages. You will also provide like the contact information like email, then you got your location, your phone number. So all this represent a different entity in your graph, which represent a different label, like one for location, one for email, etc. So this will create a billions of nodes in the Twitter database. And this is how the graph data looks like in the real world. So at high level, graph databases are nothing but an online database management system which provides the crude capability. Crude means create, read, update and delete operations. And they are mostly suitable for the OLTP use cases where they are made with transactional optimization in mind and they provide like a good transactional integrity like the acid compliant databases or we can say relational databases but there are two topics that we need to talk about the first one is the underlying storage as well as the processing engine now so if we talk about the underlying storage some graph databases will use the native graph data storage which will be way more optimized for storing and managing your graph data but some of the databases will use the non-native approach which uses the serialization of the data into a relational database which is like an object oriented database and some will definitely use the general purpose data store as well so as you can see in this figure we have this figure with different graph databases in the market today and as you can see we got the graph storage and there are like non-native graph storages 
present for Twitter flock DB as well as the infinity graph and Titan. So they use the non-native approach, but there are some graph databases like the Neo4j graph database, which is very popular nowadays, which uses the native graph storage, which is like way more optimized for reading and writing the data into their database. So if we talk about the processing engine, graph databases uses the index free adjacency which means that if we have two nodes which are connected to each other which means that these nodes will have a physical connection between them and they will point to each other that gives us a very big advantage and it gives us immense performance improvement if we compare it to the relational databases because we need to give the relations between these tables using the primary and foreign keys. But in this case, we already have relationships incorporated in our graph. So that will give us the immense performance benefit as compared to the SQL and NoSQL databases. And when we describe about the native graph processing power, then comes the index free adjacency in picture. So as you can see, we got the Neo4j database which uses the native graph storage as well as the native graph processing which gives it a very optimized storage as well as management of the graph data includes the benefit of the index free adjacency. Okay, so nowadays in this day and age of budgets as well as the tight project deadlines and the corporate standards replacing a well-established systems like the relational database systems is very difficult for any organization in the world today. And as we talk about the benefits and the immense performance improvement of graph databases, if we compare it to the relational databases, there are some of the other benefits as well, which can justify the different use cases as well as the implementation of the graph databases in every organization. So that we are going to discuss now. Okay, so the most compelling reason to use the graph databases is like the sheer performance improvement it provides if we compared it to the any relational databases as well as the NoSQL databases in the world today. So if we talk about the relational databases, the join intensive query will perform poorer and poorer when your data set will grow. So if you have like five, six tables joined together with some key and you got like daily millions of records coming into that table, eventually the performance will degrade and your queries will run slower and slower because your query will have to scan the whole data in that relational table. But that is not the case in the graph databases. When you fire a query in graph databases, since the data is connected and it takes the benefit of the index free adjacency. So therefore your queries will be only limited to the certain portion of the graph. So it will not traverse the whole graph. So as you got like millions of nodes coming in every day, but your queries will only be limited to that localized part of the graph. So that's why your query performance will not affect at all when you have a growing data set. So that is a very huge advantage if we compared it to the relational databases. So if we talk about the flexibility in today's day and age, flexibility is one of the most important aspect of data engineering field because we don't know everything ahead of the time. So when we start the project, we will be having some data, but as the data grows, we need to add many attributes in our workflow. But to do that in relational databases, it is a quite full of a hassle activity to incorporate new fields or add new attributes into the relational tables. And it requires a lot of maintenance as well. And it hinders the ability to developer to quickly respond to the schema changes. But in graph, graph databases are additive in nature, which means that we can change its schema over time and evolve our model as per the business requirement. So if today business comes with a new use case, like if we need to incorporate and add the new data in our graph, then developer do not need to work more to add that data because graph databases are kind of a category of NoSQL databases, which don't have a fixed schema assigned to it, which means that you can change your schema over time and it is not like 
every node should have a specific number of properties in your graph database we are going to talk about properties in the next lecture but to sum it up flexibility is the most important aspect of every data engineering project so that's why graph databases will give you that capability to evolve your schema over time and you can add as many fields as possible because of the additive nature of the graph which is like awesome and the last but not least which is agility so in this agile development era we got like a evolved schema and to evolve your schema over time your development should be frictionless and your schema changes should be efficient so graph databases will give you that capability to frictionlessly evolve your schema over time and it is not like there is a risk of a schema free database because as we already know that graph databases have a very flexible schema and it doesn't have any rules or constraint created at the beginning definitely you can create it depending upon which graph databases you use but in its core principle graph databases allows a schema free operations which means if you have like two nodes in your databases and if they represent a same role in your graph but they could have a different number of properties as well as the data types in the graph which gives us the capability to evolve your schema over time and also considering the data governance in mind so which means that in the agile development graph databases will be a great choice for many use cases in all the organizations in the world today and because of these reasons and all the benefits it brought onto the table it is one of the most popular choice in today's era of agile development okay so this is all about today's lecture in today's lecture we have discussed all about graph databases and understood how the data is represented in graph database and we have also seen some of the most popular databases in the world right now and as well their benefits and how it helps organizations to build their data model in this world of agile development so if you have any difficulties understanding it just let me know in the comments and i'll get back to you as soon as possible and in the next lecture we are going to compare all these databases like sql database the no sql and the graph databases and discuss in depth of their all differences as well as their similarities so stay tuned and subscribe to the channel